Well, shortly we'll be joining Paul in Ukraine, Peter in Moscow in Russia. But first, back to James Bay's in Newport where that NATO summit is taking place and there's plenty on the agenda there James but the Ukraine is really dominating this meeting isn't it it's certainly dominating much of the meeting and it will certainly dominate the next couple of hours because although they've had one preliminary meeting uh, with some NATO leaders and President Poroshenko, the big meeting on Ukraine starts in the next 45 minutes. That's the meeting of what's known as the NATO-Ukrainian Commission. Uh, that's a body that's been in place for a long time because NATO and Ukraine have had a relationship for a long time. They've talked about possible Ukrainian membership for a long time and Ukrainian troops have actually fought alongside NATO troops and served in places like Kosovo of Bosnia and uh, Afghanistan. It's not clear yet exactly what's going to come out of this meeting. We know from NATO that they are going to set up a new rapid reaction force. They already have one of those, but this will be a very, very rapid reaction force uh, known as a spearhead force, which can deploy in about two days some 4,000 troops on that readiness. Also, at the end of the meeting, we think there'll be some sort of declaration from NATO about Ukraine. Now, I've seen a draft of part of that declaration. I'm not saying it's going to be the final declaration because some NATO leaders may want to set, uh, change some of the language. The draft I've, said, I've seen says, we commend the people of Ukraine for their commitment to freedom and democracy and their independence to decide their own future and foreign policy course free from outside interference. One other thing I'm hearing, uh, Laura, I've been speaking to a number of officials, one Western official telling me that they now believe, latest intelligence, there are 3,000 Russian troops now inside Ukraine. That number keeps on rising. Mm. Hundreds of tanks there as well. And they believe that puts the number of Russian troops inside Ukraine actually more than the separatists they're fighting alongside. Very interesting indeed. James, we'll be following events there from Newport very closely. Thanks very much for the update. Let's uh, cross over now to Paul Brennan. He's live for us in Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. Paul, we've got the two sides. We've got Kiev, we've got Moscow we're talking about this ceasefire proposal. I mean, with that on the table, are we starting to see things calm down there? Far from it. In fact, the exact opposite. In the last 25 minutes, we've seen, uh, actually we've heard and seen uh, a sustained barrage of what could be artillery, what could also be mortar fire uh, from the north of the city here, where I'm standing in Donetsk. Out that way, close to the airport, frankly, a big pall of smoke then rose above the buildings uh, just the other side of the tree that's over in, in that way. Um, we're not sure which way it was going. It sounds almost as though it was outcoming from the airport, which is currently held by a small contingent of Ukrainian soldiers. But down in the south, in Mariupol, which is a strategically vital city, we've also witnessed, Al Jazeera teams down there have witnessed a big push by pro-Russian, in fact, probably Russian tanks, at least 10 of them, pushing from a, a town that they'd already captured a week ago, a place called Novoazovsk, pushing forward the, uh, at least 30 kilometers um, closer to uh, the, that, that town of Mariupol. Um, the problem in identifying which is Russian and which is pro-Russian uh, and tanks which have just been taken from the Ukrainian military is, of course, they'd fly flags of convenience. They fly the flag of the Donetsk People's Republic or they fly the flag, the red flag of the Russian Orthodox Army, which is the name of one of the other militia uh, down in this part of the world. It does seem that th matters are coming to a head. It's almost as though with just hours to go before that contact group meets in Minsk on Friday. There is some last minute territory gaining trying to trying to take place. OK, Paul, thanks very much for the update on a pretty murky situation there in eastern Ukraine. Let's cross over now to Moscow where we can join Peter Sharp. And Peter, this NATO summit in the UK is provoking some pretty strong reaction from Moscow. What are they saying about Ukraine? Well, basically, Russia's come in for some condemnation from all sides at this uh, NATO summit, as we, we knew it would. Um, all the countries criticizing its, its alleged, or even less than alleged, its involvement uh, in the support and the, and the, and the help given to, to the rebel forces. And Sergei Lavrov, Russian's uh, 
foreign minister who hasn't really stopped talking today uh, he condemned this anti-russian rhetoric and he said basically he accused washington of supporting the party of war the party of war that's why he described the ukraine uh, government and he urged and warned nato do not offer uh, ukraine membership of the alliance it would immediately derail the peace process and it would immediately mean an end to the possible talks on the ceasefire this is what he had to say вот ровно в эти моменты когда нащупываются какие-то Exactly when approaches have started to emerge towards resolving specific problems between Kyiv and the rebels, exactly at this time demands have been heard from Kyiv about the need to give up the no-block status and start the process of joining NATO. This is an open attempt to disrupt all the efforts to launch a dialogue. Now, Paul mentioned this meeting on Friday in Minsk between the two sides. What do you think is going to come out of that? Well, I think there's a growing sense of optimism that there will something will come out of that. Um, we've had the first um, signs from the rebels, basically, that um, they've been they've been they've been very quiet on on all of this up until now, and now they're actually speaking out and saying, "Look, we feel that um, we are prepared to sign a ceasefire document that would begin at 11 o'clock GMT. We're prepared for Donbass to be divided up into five separate regions, which would be monitored by the OSCE. Uh, that sounds very, very encouraging. Um, they will be working off the documents prepared uh, by President Putin uh, on Thursday. Uh, and uh, there is, I think, feeling from both sides uh, that uh, from all sides really that, that this could really be the first really positive chance uh, for an end to the fighting than we've seen in, in the last four months and just a few moments ago uh, Lavrov urged all sides in this to refrain from further violence and sign the ceasefire in Minsk tomorrow. Okay very interesting to follow that development there as well. Peter thanks very much for that update there from Moscow.